Okay, folks, Brent's Automotive here. That's my fancy name. But anyway, uh, Dodge Neon, like a 04, I think. And this is a video to demonstrate what I warn people about with their timing belts. So that is the utter end. And this timing belt gave its all. Every last bit of strength it had, it gave up. And you can see it stripped the backing off this side here. This belt's crusty anyway. And completely snapped. It's done. Well, the Dodge 2.0, or Chrysler 2.0, is an interference engine. Therefore, just putting a timing belt back on, over on this side here, you'd have a nasty surprise. You'd pay to put a timing belt on or do it yourself, whatever, and it's not going to work. Because... I'm gonna focus down in here. Let me move this light. Way too bright. That is, I don't know if that's too bright or not, but there's the kissing marks on the carbon. You can see the two shiny spots. Those are the intake valves making their close encounter of the third kind on the piston. This, uh, this one here, uh, no such marks. This one here, um, you can see them there. The two faint, so those are wasted. Those are wasted. Now, this one should be fine there. Uh, this one here is good, I know, and I pressure tested them too, so I know from other means before I tore it down which ones are good and which ones are bad. But back here, I want you to notice as well, if you can see those marks, those are exhaust valves. They're bent there. And, well, let's just clean out tad bit more oil here we can show you the other I think this wiped out the majority of the valves in the entire engine uh, quite frankly I'm grabbing some towels here to get the oil out of the back so we can see carefully don't want to disturb the carbon because that's like the fingerprint of damage it's kind of nice to be able to see it I just took the cylinder head off about three minutes ago and this cylinder here what I did, my my testing for this is, uh, they said I had a broken time belt, brought it in. The easiest way and the sure way I know what to do, and this is the way I like to do it. There's other ways, but I take the valve cover off, I pull the rocker arm assembly. And this has a center camshaft, it's not a dual overhead cam, but it has one camshaft across the middle, rockers going to each side. So I pull the rockers off, that'll theoretically release all the valves, they'll be up at their seated position. Sometimes you can just look across the valve or put a straight edge on them. You'll see one's lower. <coughs> Excuse me. That means the valve's been hit and pushed to the side and therefore the spring can't return all the way up. So you can look at the stems of the valves and you, a lot of times you can see one just, if you just have one kissed valve, one will just be down like that with the straight edge across and you know they're dead. But that's not what I did in this case because I could not get a straight edge across and that's not the sure proof test anyway. Um, once those are pulled, I take the spark plugs out. I put air into the cylinder from the compressor and because the valves are closed, uh, the air should expand, drive the piston down if the piston's not down already. Sometimes you'll see the crankshaft move. But what you will see or hear is uh, if you have a bent valve, you'll hear it either hissing into the intake or into the exhaust. In this case, we have both. So uh, this one here, this cylinder here was just blowing out as fast as I could put it in. These ones here had a tiny bit of compression. They actually probably would have run very 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 poorly these three cylinders here may have flashed enough to drive the engine probably would have stalled at idle though so anyway toast let's look at the exhaust so if anybody wants to that's how you test and see if you have good cylinders after a yeah you can see right i don't know if this will focus up yep right there right yeah shiny spot there and shiny spot there bam bam that's a hit on the exhaust right here shiny spot there hmm not there, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. These go at the same time. There's two valves per exhaust and intake. So these are bent. This one here, cylinder three, it's really interesting. I've got, I got leak down on it, but I'm not seeing the, oh shoot, is that a, is that piston toast? I don't think so, I think that's just a blem. Yeah, I thought that was a crack in the piston. I'm like, oh crap, but no, I don't see the blem on this one. Um, maybe it's, but anyway, and back here as well, yes, bam, bam, these are toast too. 
So anyway, folks, so let's go over here. And it's very subtle. On this motor here, when valves come in at an angle, if this was the cylinder head, the flat line of the cylinder head, if valves come in at an angle like this, a lot of times when they get hit, they'll just get pushed out of the way. And you can use the head again. But on Kias, uh, some other vehicles, the clearances are just too tight. You drop a timing belt and the valves, the angles aren't so much like that. They're more vertical right over the top. And they just smash, they break the heads off the valve, they go through the piss and they make holes. Am I bleeding? No, that's just a light. But these, usually it destroys the entire head. When they're like this and the heads stay on the valves, they don't come off, you can usually get away with a valve job. Putting new valves in, lapping them even, if you want to be really, you know, you can lap them or you can cut the seats, whatever you need to do, depending on how bad severe it is. This is the cylinder here, intake valves that are toast. And I don't think you'll be able to tell in the video, but I can fit my nails under the edges here. Um, uh, yeah, these got shoved. This is, would be the lowest point of the valve on the, right here. These were hit and shoved this way, and they don't seal all the way. You can blow right through there. You, if I had a flashlight here, you could uh, see light through there. In fact, why don't we just try it for a demonstration? And see how bad they are bent. I mean, it doesn't take much. You think, oh, they don't look bent, but I'm try to shine some light down this. I don't know if that's going to work or not. For my demos, I'm using the LED light, but well, let me stand this up here. This might be a fail for this demonstration, but in any case, I can see them. I just want you to be able to see the gaps that are coming through here. It's kind of interesting. Oh, it's not going to do it for us. They're there. It's because the the port takes a turn. And because the port turns too much, we're not getting light can't bend, so we're not getting the view. But anyway, they're toast. So we're going to be replacing a lot of valves, probably every valve in here, and doing a valve job. People, replace your timing belts. They're, uh, they're recommended for a reason. And, I mean, unless you have a non-interference motor, which is pretty uncommon these days. Some of the older Toyotas and things like that were non-interference. Chrysler products. Oh, Honda products, lots of other products, all interference. But we're going to revive it. We're going to bring it back to life and get some good seal on the head, get the valve sealing well, and we'll send this back down the road with a new timing belt, new water pump, uh, new valves, valve job, gaskets, and it'll run like new. A lot of times people just chuck a motor in. I like to actually repair stuff um, because you can, and it works just as good as buying a motor or better. So this, uh, just if anybody's curious, this Neon failed at 151,000 miles. By the way, it looks like this is a multi-layer steel, which it is. Yeah, multi-layer steel gasket, which is what most are going to these days. That means they have several layers, usually two ends and a, and a, and a laminate softer material in the middle. You can probably see that there. Yeah, anyway. That's that. All right, that's another episode of Brent's Garage. I know it's not the turbo Mustang, but hey, it's what it is. Just basic uh, suck, squeeze, bang, blow technology.